Hello, I'm Jen. I'm one of the leaders here at Vineyard 53 with our youth and young adults. A big welcome to everyone watching, whether you're part of church, new to church, exploring faith, or just happen to click on. You are welcome and we're so glad that you're with us. We are Vineyard 53. We're a church on an adventure, inviting people into a relationship with Jesus and seeking transformation in every part of life. In a moment, we'll go into a time of song worship where we'll sing songs about Jesus and to Jesus. Feel free to join in at home, even if it's just to reflect on the lyrics. After that, we'll then have some announcements and we'll go into a short talk. But first, let me pray. Father God, we thank you that you love us and that you care for us, no matter who we are, where we are and how we're feeling right now. I pray that you will help us to meet with you. Let us seek you and feel your spirit this morning, that we can meet with you and just push aside all those things that might be distracting us and feeling heavy in our lives. Let us fix our eyes on you. Let us meet with you this morning. Amen. You are God, you glorify.
Hello. Good morning. Hello, welcome. Great to see you. <laughs> My name's <laughs> John. I'm Anna, and it's lovely that you come to be with today. We have the privilege of, of leading this church along with a wonderful team. And, um, you know, whether you've just clicked on for the first time or whether you've been with us for years, we're so pleased to be spending the morning yes. with you. Hi. And it might be that you have clicked on today and you are curious about Jesus. You've got questions about faith. And if that's you, you've come to the right place and we really want to help you out on your uh, adventure of finding out more. And, and just below um, this, there will be some links that will lead you uh, to some great resources some places to ask questions and we just really um yeah really I recommend that and also if you don't have a bible in your home it would be our absolute privilege to give you one and so do again just email us and let us know that you'd like that and we will send you one brilliant wonderful it's never been easier to invite people to church so you can still do that even now as you're watching this morning and so welcome to anybody who's new um i wonder how your week has been for us <laughs> yeah half terms just mainly finished. decorating <laughs> mainly decorating yeah. trying to make it different from a normal week where you've got three <laughs> little ones around and uh yeah not doing schoolwork this this week uh, we also know it's a big day tomorrow where Boris will talk about the roadmap mm. for what happens next. And of course, we'll keep you updated with how that affects church and what church continues to look like uh, over the next season. So keep keying into that. Small groups. Yeah, the very, very heart of things. At the heart of church. Yeah. Um, smaller communities meeting online at the moment. And there's a place for you if you're not in a small group and would like to be. They've only just started for this term. Again, links below. Fantastic. And there's some brilliant things coming up um, yes. in this week ahead and just beyond. And we'd love to just sort of tell you about a few of those now. So so what's happening, John? Next Sunday, so week today at seven o'clock in the evening, we have got something called What's Your Story Wellbeing? For those of you who are with us through the summer, we had a whole load of events around What's Your Story? People sharing how they came to know Jesus, how they came to faith. You might still want to go back and watch them. Yeah. They were amazing. They were brilliant. And we're continuing that theme, but around well-being. We know it's such a tough time for all of our mental health and just a big challenge at the moment. And so there are going to be events in evenings just asking that question, how do we get through this time? And so followers of Jesus, People in church will be sharing their story seven o'clock next week. Obviously, join us at, at 10.30 next week as well. <laughs> yeah, but that would be great. Yeah. Yep. Amazing. What else is happening for youth? What's happening for youth? Yes, youth. 12 o'clock mm. on Instagram live. Second one for the older youth, if you want to tell them about it or if you're watching and you want to be part of that. 12 o'clock Instagram live. Finny for three youth. And also Lent has just started on Wednesday, gone back. If you'd like to join a WhatsApp group going through Lectio 365, there's still time to get in touch. Brilliant, fantastic. And now it's time for a little break. So a little comfort break for you. Maybe just go make a cup of tea, uh, get a snack, maybe text someone that you haven't um, seen in a while, just say hi. And then Alison, um, our small group coordinator, will come and speak to us after a short break. Brilliant. Wonderful. We Bye. have a promo video for oh. Wellbeing Sunday. Just Amazing. Well. <laughs> Catch <Bye>. that. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sai. I'm Andrea. I'm Boyd. We're both really close to our family, and it's been hard you know, not seeing them as much as we'd like. I was a very anxious person from my teenage years. I had panic attacks when I was with more than just a few people. And that's what I miss about seeing people, because that's when that conversation happens more. I'm thinking more about why I'm doing things or not doing things. Saying no to people and setting boundaries.
I used to live on the south coast near Portsmouth where there is a naval base. And um, back in the days where just after the Falklands War, terribly sorry, yes, I really am that old, the, the fleet was sailing back from the Falklands and they were all going to come into Portsmouth Harbour. And many people were going down to Portsmouth to see that. And some friends and I thought we'd sail down there to greet the fleet. We had to, you know, get into the harbour where we were at, go around the headland and down into Portsmouth. And it was going to be a fun adventure for those of them that like sailing. And um, I was joining because I couldn't think of a valid excuse to get out of it, to be quite honest. Anyway, so we got into the boat and we set off and it was an absolutely gorgeous day. The sun was shining. It was really hot. There wasn't a cloud in the sky. There wasn't a breeze in the air. The, the sea was calm. I could see my face in it. it. For me, as a person who really doesn't like sailing, it was ideal sailing conditions. But um, for those sailors who actually wanted to get somewhere, it was pretty hopeless. Um, we sat in the harbour there um, for hours. We were, there was a boy about 20 yards away and uh, we weren't getting any closer to that. We weren't getting any further away from it, so maybe that was an encouragement, but we really weren't getting any closer to it. I don't know if you have faced times where you feel like you've been trying to make headway, trying to get through, trying just pushing against something, trying to get there and you just not made it. Feels a bit like you're bashing your head against a brick wall or struggling in some way. Um, I don't know if that's been you at all. We've been going through a series based on the book of Mark, which is one of the books in the New Testament that looks at the life of Jesus. And we have spent time looking at who Mark says Jesus is, the Son of God and the Messiah, which is another word for king. And we've looked at some of his miracles and healings. We've looked at um, what Mark has, and Jesus have said about forgiveness and how we all need that. Um, last week, we looked at some of the parables, and these are stories that Jesus used to teach people through. And this week, I'd like to look at um, where Jesus is when times are tough. Let me read to you from Mark chapter 6. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to Bethsaida while he dismissed the crowd. After leaving them, he went up on a mountainside to pray. When evening came, the boat was in the middle of the lake and he was alone on land. He saw the disciples straining at the oars because the wind was against them. Shortly before dawn, he went out to them, walking on the lake. He was about to pass by them, but when they saw him walking on the lake, they thought he was a ghost. They cried out, because they all saw him and were terrified. Immediately he spoke to them and said, Take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Then he climbed into the boat with them, and the wind died down. They were completely amazed, for they had not understood about the loaves. Their hearts were hardened. Let's have a wee look about, back to see what has just really happened with those disciples. Well, after we left them with the parables that John was talking about last week, they went in a boat. Jesus and all the disciples were in a boat and Jesus was so tired he fell asleep. And there was a storm and the disciples thought they were going to die because this boat was going to sink. So they woke Jesus up and he told the waves and the wind to be calm and the disciples were stunned and then Jesus did more healing and they saw a girl raised from the dead Wow! and then Jesus sent the disciples out to go and do the stuff they'd seen him do and they'd seen people healed isn't that incredible and then now this afternoon just before we come into the story They'd been out with about 5,000 families 
who were hungry and they were in a place where there weren't any pop-ups and there weren't any barbecue facilities and nobody brought their packed lunches with them, all except one little boy who'd brought some fish and loaves. And in the hands of Jesus, he fed all those families. And not only that, there were leftovers. Go figure. Anyway, straight after that, Jesus put these disciples in the boat and told them to row off to the next place. And that should have taken them a couple of hours, apparently. And Jesus went off up into the mountain to pray. And this is lovely. I love this. This is a real kind of encouragement and a lesson for me. If Jesus, you know, Jesus needed to go up to pray, wanted to go and spend time with God to pray, then how much more do I need that? How much more do any of us who are following Jesus need that right now? To go and spend time with God, to listen to him, to chat with him, to be refreshed by him. Excuse me. I think there's a lot for me to learn in that. So when Jesus came down from the mountain, he's looking at, he can see the disciples. He can see them in the middle of the sea. The Sea of Galilee is about 13 miles long and about eight miles wide. So if they were in the middle, they're about four miles in. And he could see they were struggling with the wind, struggling with the waves, straining against the oars. Now, I don't know how good your eyesight is. But I have stood on the shores of the place where I grew up. And I've looked out to sea and seen boats out there. And I couldn't tell you how far four miles is, but it's a long way. And I can see boats out there, but I couldn't tell you whether they're tossing and whatever and bouncing around on the waves. I couldn't tell you whether there's people in them. And I couldn't tell you whether people are there struggling against the waves with straining with the oars but Jesus could see what was going on in this boat with the disciples that is supernatural vision that is another miracle that Jesus can see that and the encouragement we can take away from that is he sees us he sees us in our present struggles he sees us in what we're going through he sees us with what we're straining against he sees us not just the bits that we show other people but he sees what's going on inside our hearts and inside our minds and he stands watching the disciples for hours between five and seven hours, some people figure out. And I've often wondered, why didn't he go to them before? Now, those who know more than me and have written books and stuff like that on this have given some suggestions that possibly he's waiting for them to ask. They're possibly waiting for them to ask for help, to cry out to him for help. Or maybe he's just watching to see how well they're doing. Go on, how can you do? Can you do it? Are you getting there? Are you managing to do it? Is he rooting for them? But it's a long time while he waits. But he's watching them. His eyes are on them the whole time. Note to self in this. Storms happen. Jesus had told the disciples to get into the boat. He told them to row. He told them where to go. They were following instructions. They were doing what they were told. The storms came up. The storm happens. It doesn't mean they were in the wrong place or doing the wrong thing. It might feel that where we are and what we're doing is such a struggle. It must be wrong. It's got to be wrong. But maybe... The storm is just natural causes. It's not because of what we're doing. 
And what we need to do in that is to keep going. Keep going. Keep on keeping on. John Wimber, the founder of the Vineyard Movement, um, was known for memorable, short, catchy phrases. And one of them was, old orders remain standing orders until you are given new orders. That's old orders remain standing orders until you get new orders, which is basically keep on keeping on. Or, in the words of that well-known philosopher, Dory, keep on swimming, keep on swimming, 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 just keep swimming. Keep on keeping on with what we know to be true, what we know in our knower to be what Jesus has told us. And there is encouragement in that. So after about five to seven hours, Jesus walks out on the water in the storm. He doesn't calm the storm before he goes on the water. He goes in the storm. Now, I would have thought his walk could have been a much more pleasant one had the water been smooth like, you know, when I was out on it. But now he goes out to meet the disciples in the storm that they are facing. In the very thing that they are struggling with, he appears to them in. And they are scared. Then they're scared. They weren't scared before, but now they're scared. They think he's a ghost. And Jesus makes to walk past them. Again, cleverer people than me have written things like, this could be because he was wanting them to call out for help. Wanting them to ask him for help. I have a kind of theory that perhaps he was walking past them because he knew he, they would think he was a ghost. And if this ghost, this scary apparition was walking straight for them, that might be even more scary than if it was walking past them. But whichever is the, the right one, Jesus was walking past the boat and they cried out. They didn't cry out, hey, Jesus, did you bring the leftovers? He they cried out in terror. They were petrified. And Jesus turned to them and looked at them and said, Hey, take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. And they recognized his voice and he got into the boat and the water was calm and he sat with them and he helped them row. He helped them row to shore. I, I imagine as soon as he got in the boat with them, it's like, hi guys, let me grab one of these oars. Let me come with you. Let me help you in this storm. Let me help you through to shore because you are exhausted. He got in the boat with them. He didn't take them away from the boats. He didn't take them out of the lake. He didn't take them away from that. He helped them get through it. So what are our takeaways from this? There will be storms. There are always storms. But they do not mean that we are in the wrong place doing the wrong thing. Sometimes we just need a bit of encouragement to keep on keeping on. Because we're going the direction he's told us. Jesus always has his eyes on us. He sees us. He knows us. He never takes his eyes from us. When my kids were small, where we lived in the States, and the boys, I have three of them, 
they were in scouts and they would go camping very regularly. And with this troop of scouts, it was the scouts themselves that would plan these camping trips. They would plan the activities. They would plan the food. They would cook the food. They, they would organize the, what, the putting up of, of the tents and the taking down of the tents at the end. And during this time, the, um, the adults were there, the leaders were there watching them. It might have looked they were that they were having a nice relaxing time, but their eyes were never off the boys and what they were doing. They could see their eyes making sure that they were safe, that they were doing good things. And their eyes never went off them. Similarly, Jesus' eyes never come off us. He is watching us the whole time. He knows. He sees us. Jesus sees our very hearts. And Jesus may come to us in the midst of the very thing that we are battling against, the very thing that we are struggling with. He might appear to us in that, in the way that we don't expect him. I really don't expect, I really don't think the disciples expected to see Jesus coming to them on the water, in the storm. So if you are facing a storm, some difficulties, a struggle, can I encourage you, encourage me to look for Jesus in the middle of it? Lord, are you in there? The storm didn't die down till Jesus got in the boat. And we all need Jesus in our boat with us. We all need him in our storm with us. To help us and to guide us to shore. I've done a lot of talking. I don't know what you're facing right now. Whether you're facing a storm whether you're facing difficulties and struggles. I don't want to make light of anything that you might be facing. The past year has been horrendous. And many of us have faced, a thing, faced things we'd never imagined we'd have to go through. Such pain, such illness, such grief, such hardship. And I don't know what you're going through. But my prayer for you, for us, is that we'd all know Jesus in the middle of our storm, that we'd know Jesus with us, coming alongside us, saying, Hey, take courage. It's I. I am with you. Don't be afraid. Let me pray. Jesus, I thank you that you see us. You see where we are and what we're going through, what we're dealing with, what struggle we face each day, what storm we are in right now. You see us. And you come to help us in the middle of that. Lord, I pray that those of us who need to see you right now would do so, that you would come and help us, that you would come and get in the boat with us, that you would calm the waves that we are facing, that you would grab hold of the oar and row that boat. Help us to row that boat, to know how to get through what we're facing, to the safety of the shore. Would you come alongside us now? Could we hear your voice saying to each one of us, hey, take courage. It's me. I am with you. Don't be afraid. Amen. 
We offer the opportunity for you to receive prayer if you would like afterwards. There is a Zoom link. If you click on that, there will be people there ready to pray for you. And for the rest of you, have a wonderful rest of your afternoon.